Hello and welcome to 4,000 and Counting. I'm Wati and today I am joined by my friend, Miss John Rose, or Erin Rose. <laughs> he has, has, hasn't bothered changed the screen name yet. No, I didn't. Sorry. You may recognise her from Adam's Angels. You may recognise her from the Romford Raiders. You may recognise her from being in and around UK hockey for pretty much as long as I can remember. Erin, thanks for joining 4,000 and Counting, my lovely. You're welcome. Um, right. Let's get into your uh, early days. Obviously, your brother played a bit, right? He and did. We just talked off air, actually. He made his senior Dynamo's debut at the ripe old age, 14, 15. Yeah, it was about 14, 15, yeah. Yeah, something that we sadly don't have in the the English side of the game right now. We know Scotland are trying to implement it to, to get some younger kids in the game. But as someone whose job it is to tape us fuckers back together... Do you think that these good 14, 15 year olds should be getting that opportunity to play at the senior level, at, at the very least skate? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think, you know, there's some big kids in this country and yeah. um, I've seen some big kids really rock some adults in my time. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, I think providing they're taught to hit safely and play safely and providing, and it's training, it's not just go straight out and be a game um, and you've got to get used to that environment. I, I can't see... What the problem is, in my opinion, I'm just thinking, well, we did it 10, 15 X amount of years ago. And, and I think you guys all did quite fine, really. Um, so yeah. there we go. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I was talking to you off air. Uh, some of the kids get hurt. Yeah. Some of the adults get hurt. Some of the kids get hurt playing PE, rugby at PE in school or... There's a, a, a one that you said, like a question. Riding oh, yeah. horses. Horses. I'm not being funny. I was a how I, I mean, God, my brother played ice hockey and I I was horses and rode race horses and show jumped and did all this. And I think between us we were in A and E every week. Like literally <laughs> yeah, right. my mum's first name. Yeah. It was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> like literally, it was like, which one have you got this week? Yeah. Um, and and I got more hurt than he did, you know? Um, yeah, of course. I think I've had more surgeries than he's had, and but Life's about risks, and I'm not sitting there saying, you know, all these kids, you've got to be eligible, you've got to be fit enough, and you've got to be game aware. You can't just be like, well, I'm 14 now, I can go and play. Yeah. If, if you can't skate properly and you can't hit safely and you're not game aware. But I think if you are all of those things and you're in the top sort of echelons, you know, and you're yeah. capable, why not give them the opportunity to train up? I, I totally agree. And even if it has to go down the route of what, they do in the WHL, Quebec Major Junior League and Ontario Hockey League. It's, you know, exceptional status, exceptional status. Okay, we might give five out a year. Okay, well, if it's going to be five, it needs to be the best five kids yeah. in the country that are ready. Chances are the best five kids in the country will be ready. Yeah. Even if it is such a small amount, this is only five or it's 10. Yeah. Out yeah. of the 40, 50 adult clubs that we have, at least it's five or ten. At least it's a step. And yeah. you know what? If they perform and you start seeing better results on the back of that, maybe next year it's 15. Yeah. How, however you want to roll it out. Like you said, we're not just saying, hey, you're 14, you're eligible, just be, just because you're old enough. It's It's got to be if you're good enough, you're old enough. Oh, 100%. I mean, we've got two guys that are 16 in the National League in my team, and they're phenomenal. Like, literally... Is that Capsy? Unbelievable. Yeah, Caps and Tomlin, they're unreal. Like, really unreal. Um, brilliant players. I, um, I don't I don't know too much about either of them, but I was on the phone to Ryan Cathcart yesterday. Obviously, Roman is in Slough. Roman's like 17 now. So he's he's uh, the similar sort of age to those boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ryan was saying, like, they're yeah. fucking good. They're, they're good. They're, yeah, they're, they're really decent. good. They're really good. They're, they're good workers and they're good players. They've got a bright future. And I mean, they're holding their own in the national team, in the national league, you know, and they're not, they don't look out of place. <laughs> well, they're put, putting points up and stuff. Yeah, but so that. obviously the fact that they can step in at 16 and play at that national level and do well leads me to believe that if they let them start skating last year with 15 year olds, yeah. guess what? They'd be more prepared than they already are for Amazing. this hockey. Amazing that, isn't it? But hey. I mean, it seems to be doing the rounds, um, especially on our podcast, talking a lot about juniors. We've got some interesting ones. I just had a really, really interesting conversation I think that people might like. So I spoke to a, a lad named Mark. I won't give his last name away, but from Oxford. And he's involved in the roller scene. And obviously the best guys, they all get to go to nationals. On ice, we know it's going to be Sheffield. It's going to be Guildford. It's going to be Nottingham. It's the same old teams every year with the best junior development. 
and everybody else becomes kind of becomes an afterthought. So his answer, he wants to see a bottom out nationals, you right. know, a bit a bit more fun. So the three south teams, the three bottom end in the south, and the three bottom end in the north, they go in, they play a day's tournament, thirteen hours of hockey, fitness, fun. I'd love like, it. Great idea, like because how many kids do we lose? Because obviously, if they're finishing in bottom three teams, ice as well. The disparity in the results is shocking. You're seeing teams get pumped 19 nil. You're seeing that like, teams not score a goal for fucking four games because they're playing out of their level. How many of these kids do we make Keep it up. from? Yeah. Under eights, tens, twelves are still playing when they're under sixteens. Because if you get that on a weekly, oh, for you're, like, yeah, for eight yeah. nine years. You're probably done. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, yeah, do you know what? It's and, and also, what about like when you're older, you can you can look back and go, oh my god, do you, know, do you remember when we like got shit pumps, like all these games, yeah, 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 called national tournament, and we all had fun, um, and we were only twelve years old still. And um, and do you know what? I think that's a great idea. And I think, yeah, sometimes it is more about having fun. You know, at the top end, I do get there's a bit more of a, a yeah, absolutely, it. and yeah, I'm probably one of those mums. It's probably just as hard on my kid as anyone else that's, that wants their kid to do well. But equally, you know, it's like, well, losing all the time can't be fun, right? If if you're not improving and you're not enjoying it and it's no fun and every time you've got to go to the rink or the roller pad, you're thinking, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Why? But let's, do you know what? Even you have these kind of tournaments at the bottom end of it and guess what? Some of these bigger clubs might go, actually, I didn't even know about this kid. Yeah, he's actually, really, that kid's really good, and he's, he's really game aware, and fine, he isn't on the best team, but actually, he can see a pass from there. Yeah, so, and, or, yeah. I, I I know they do, like, the power of 12 and all these things now with the, with the juniors. Yeah, they do some good stuff. They're, they're doing bits, but, you know, there's more than 12 kids. There's going to be, what about the 13th to the 21st kid, or the 21st to the 28th kid? Like there think, is... yeah, it, yeah, it's more like the power of 10 and 12s. I think that's more like the age. It's the best 10 year olds and the best 12 year olds. So that's what it was when I was involved. Is that how, is that how, how yeah, it works? Yeah, the power of 10 and power of 12 is um, the age group. So yeah, it's got, under, yeah. under 10s. So Matt did both when he, it was obviously he was doing it. So, yeah. um, and actually, in all fairness, it is a good day. Um, they normally have like the SNC, it's a full on day, and uh, they have chats and talks and nutrition. And um, right. yeah, I mean, it's carnage. I, I helped do those days when I, I worked part of the IHA, and uh, it's good fun for the kids, they yeah. love it. Um, yeah, it's it's quite stressful for the adults. It's like herding I, can ima- I can imagine, yeah, <laughs> it is herding cats at that age group, but the kids love it. Um, and that's what it should be about, really. It's a taste of like what it would be on an elite pathway. Um, so yeah, the ethos is there, and it's quite actually a, quite a nice little ethos that they have with that, if I'm being honest. We, well, we just want to bring as many kids through from junior hockey into senior hockey in the UK. Not only that, we need to get it to where a stage where our juniors don't have to go to North America, they don't have to go to Germany, they don't have to go to Czech Republic, Finland. Don't get me wrong, some still will, and good for them, go and do it. But imagine, you know, a 30-game junior season where 20 games are competitive and yeah. you're bringing 25 kids a season through that are ready to go. Like when we do it now, it's be- the numbers are bare minimum. Yeah. It's difficult. And we need to get it to a stage where we're consistently producing numbers that can come up and go straight into NHL one, into the national, well, you know, like Romford have got a really good set up there because yeah. They've got the national one team and then they've got the national league team. So we we saw our boy TJ, he played a charity game last year. Shout out TJ. He was already smashing the NIHL one. And then he's up with a he's up with the Raiders. And then guess what? Raiders don't have a game. He's back down the NIHL one and he's getting more ice time and he's the guy there. Or Cap's done the same thing. He's getting points at both senior yeah. se- senior Raiders team and the junior Raiders team. There, there's good pathways there, but we're not getting enough of those kids to to no. come through. I don't think COVID helped. I don't think that that really annihilated that age had group. a massive yeah, especially I think in that age group. And I think I mean my son was in yeah, so it's kind of his age group, so like the fourteen year old category. Yeah, um, a lot of them kids dropped off. I think it was that cusp of you know when you get to like the under 12, 13 section and they're on like that elite pathway. Um, I I think COVID had a lot to do with with how things are, and I know things are trying to change but yeah mentally having a kid at home that couldn't play 
yeah, I felt for all the parents up and down the country who's kids yeah. were nuts because I had a kid. Yeah, <laughs> just go mental, yeah. Like... Like I had a goalie, so like he can't exactly save pucks himself, you know. If you yeah. go an outfield play, you can get your roller blades and your stick and your puck and you can go out, but it's a bit boring being a goalie and yeah. I'm shooting according to my son, so there's only so much we could do. <laughs> well, that's it though, because he's used to kids coming in and zipping pucks at him. Yeah, and... he's like, Mom, just don't. <laughs> yeah, even if you've even if you've got you got someone like throwing a few muffins at you. You're just going to be like, well, this is boring. <laughs> he was. In fact, I think on one of them, he came over and gave me a hug and went, like, you're trying. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for trying, Mum. So like, I took uh, that. I was like, well, we'll just, I don't know, we'll go for a walk again. <laughs> yeah, for, for a 19th walk. <laughs> Obviously, COVID, <laughs> <Off the day. laughs> COVID, um, COVID mangled loads of things. Hopefully, we're out the other side of it now. And Hopefully. we're going to see some of these juniors really progress and kick on. But for a lot of those kids in those age groups, they're going through puberty and that. that's a big part when... On the ice, strong. you get fucking stronger. You, yeah. You, you start getting faster. Your shot starts getting harder. Yeah. You start developing muscle tissue. And, you know, your bone structure starting to get a little bit more solid. Just your whole frame's yeah. improving. And a lot of the time, that's when you see these kids really kick on. Yeah. And they, they were sat on their ass in their bedroom for, for two years. Playing Xbox. Playing yeah. Xbox. I'm, I'm um, so, yeah. And it's it's trying to then recover that to yeah. ex, to an extent where maybe we were before, or better still, maybe where we were 15, 20 years ago, yeah. when we were producing a, a, a damn sight more junior players coming through the system than what we do now. And with the junior hockey the way it is, you know, there's there's a lot of good people involved, and there's a lot of people involved that sh- shouldn't be anywhere near it. It's like that in every sport, though, isn't it? I, yeah, exactly. And and I can't speak for every sport because I, I don't... I've never been involved, really, in another sport. Maybe a little bit of boxing or, you know, that's about it. Never have I been inside of, say, rugby union or a soccer team. Like I've, I've never really been a part of anything like that. Don't get me wrong, I've PT'd enough parents over the years whose kids play football and they tell me all the th- all the time, you know, little Johnny's fucking dad is the manager and guess who the striker is? Kid's got two no. left feet. Two, kid's got two left feet. Uh, you know, he runs also around with captain, his... captain, usually. <laughs> yeah, but, normally the captain. And he'll get coach's player of the year. Yeah, all that. All that jazz. And yeah, it does go on in other sports. But to, to the best of my knowledge, the way that we can improve this game is to eradicate that... And do you know what? It might cost some money. And they, but how 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 many guys do you know, Aaron, that would get back involved? Ex ex players, ex pros. How many guys do you know that would get back involved under the current format? Very few. Very few. Very if few. It, if it was changed and it was being run correctly, how many guys do you know that would jump at the opportunity to go and work with the kids? Fucking loads of them. I think a few. I think, yeah, you're probably right, actually, to be fair. 100%. Like if if I think about my mates, just ex teammates and stuff, they would never get involved right now. But if it was being run by someone who maybe had some good ideas yeah. and was was right on it, I mean, I've got a person in mind, but I'm not going to out him on the podcast. Um, I know a lot of guys that would all of a sudden be like, "Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to get down to my local rink. I'm going to get down uh, and I'm going to get involved, and I'm going to help coach the tens or the fifteens or whatever age group they feel that they could yeah. really, really work with." I know, but from my experience, I think I I preferred and I, I was better working with the fifteens and seventeens at the southwest. That like my mum was never going to give me the under eleven or under thirteen job. Like it was never going to happen. No. Quite right, quite rightly, there was better people suited to that. But the 15s and 17s, on the other hand, there was no, there was no more better for it. Like, and I got to work with like Lewis Clifford, Michael Knights, good guys that were involved, and they, well, they bounced off me. I bounced off them, and the kids loved it. And yeah. I shared a picture today, and you forget how much talent. Yeah, we have I'm at Southwest. Through. There's quite a few big names on that picture. Yeah, like there's there's a few. My guys talent. are on there. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of your boys on there. In fact, actually, and you start looking back and going, right, when do we get a next age group? Like, uh, I had Josh Waller, Matt Howlett, Harry Gulliver, Jordan Kelsall, Ethan James, Jordan Lorde. Yeah, yeah, like it, it goes on and on and on. There was I had 18 kids like that on my roster. Yeah. 
I mean, there are things like that now in, in kind of, you look at probably the under 16 age group. I mean, there's all these talented kids, but in Matt's pool, I can only go on like the age group that he's in um, and that he's gone through. Yeah. And there's some really talented kids up and down Good. the country. And I know, I know changes are, they are in the process of trying to put stuff on and make more changes and bring it on a bit. So I think obviously Rome weren't built in a day. So, yeah. uh, and fair play that they are trying to do stuff. But yeah, there's some really talented kids, which hopefully, like in ten years' time, you look back and go, like, oh my god, we'll have one of them pictures that's similar to what you showed. And I hope so. Yeah, name all these kids, you know, because there's some really, really talented kids up and down the country that um, hopefully they stick at the sport because it's a great sport. It is a great sport, and one of the one of the debates that we've been having this week is conference versus showcase. And obviously, I went through all the conference as a player from. You know, under it was under 12s, and there was no under 10s or under 11s. It was under 12s. I think I made it as like a nine-year-old. I was one of the younger guys there. And I went right the way through there to 17s, a couple of years off, and then I was back coaching, and then I did that till I was 26. So I got to see it a lot. And I can't remember many bad conference tournaments. Not many. One or two out of the... Yeah, it's fun. It's good fun. Like, the showcase, I, I haven't had any many good reports yeah. on it. And we put a poll out and, you know, over 660 votes. And out of those 660 votes, the, the options were between how I, I, yeah, hold for a showcase, Sheffield for a showcase, hold for conference and Sheffield for conference. And when we looked at it, there was zero votes for whole showcase, five votes for Sheffield showcase and the rest was pretty evenly split more so yeah, leading yeah. towards Sheffield conference weekend probably because it's easier for parents and it's Sheffield you've got loads of stuff and yeah restaurants and hotels it's a little bit easier I mean the atmosphere at Hull was wicked but yeah I think the Sheffield I mean I only voted on Sheffield because that's what we've done yeah. um, we've not done the showcase we did the conference and that's what yeah. Matt loves he still wears his southeast jersey with pride loves it yeah absolutely loves it still wears it everywhere like literally in fact he stole mine um, <laughs> he, he was so proud to represent that and I think yeah of course big things he still wears his shirt he wants that framed when he's out wearing it so they're quite pivotal things really and um but yeah i know i, I think obviously yeah, it's changed with everything and people try stuff to try and make it better and some people love it and some people don't but you never know might come do, back do you do you think it's more of a concern you know you say some people love it some people don't because we ran a similar poll on twitter and the numbers were exactly the same it is it a concern? It's a concern of mine, and it seems to be a concern of a lot of other people. Don't know if it's a concern of yours, but it's so astronomical against what they're doing right now. Like, are they listening to that and taking it on board? Are they going? Did basically have they looked at that poll, saw that poll, read the comments, and went back around the boardroom and went, "Yeah, this ain't working." I'm maybe sorry. we've not done this right because <laughs> it's so. You know, if I, I said, I can't remember who I was talking to. I, I do actually, I remember, but I won't, again, I won't name him on the pod because he's a board member. Um, I said, if it was 30, 30, 40 percent, you could go, ah, oh, fuck it, we're all right. The fact that it's, you know, 58, 42, zero. Yeah, that's big. That's That tells you that your members, and let's remember, you're a member's organisation, your members don't think you're doing the right thing. And not one of them, not two of them, all of them. Yeah, that's big, isn't it? It no, is big. Know. I'd like to think that they've probably looked at it. I mean, I, I know a few people that are involved, so... I, think I hope so. I really do hope so. And I don't want them to think that this is me ha having a, a dig and, and slagging them. What this is me doing is wanting the best for the kids. And yeah. the, ultimately, the best for the GB national team in... Like you say, let's have yeah. a look back in 10 years and have a look at that picture of all your lads that are coming through now. And hopefully... By the time they're 10 years, 24, 25, we'll see some of them playing for the GBC. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I know some of the guys that are involved and, and they have the same ethos. It is all about kids. There's a couple of decent guys that are trying to push it for the kids. And so who knows? Watch this space. But yeah, yeah. we'll see. Let's yeah. move away from move away from the kids for now. Let's go to the National League. How are you enjoying your season? You've got uh, it's long, I have to say, is it is it it's not April yet, no? No, not yet, mate. You're gonna have to grind it out for a few few more weeks here. <laughs> I'm quite tired. I'm getting a bit. I'm on a, getting on a bit, really. So, um, yeah, I'm. I'm kind of probably could retire. I'm really, <laughs> yeah. I'm really tired. Uh, but I like my team. I, I've got a good team. I'm really blessed with my lot. So um, they make they make the weekends a bit easier. And um, and you laugh most days. You're with them. So um, yeah. 
It's uh, they're a good bunch. So they make it bearable <laughs> that you're yeah. away. Obviously, my kid plays, so I very rarely get to see him play unless missing games and stuff. Like at the weekend, uh, which I managed to see him play in Bristol uh, for Invicta, so um, that was a bit of a treat. Um, but yeah, obviously, I've, for the last few years, you know, even growing up um, when Matt was little, I was with Dynamite <laughs> for X amount of seasons, you know, and this is my job. This is what I do. So um, I don't always get to see him play, which can be a downside um, a little bit. So as I'm getting on a bit, I'm like, you know, he's only young once. So the National League became the National League after the demise of the EPL. Then they tried the NIHL one South, NIHL one North thing. You know, Stratham and that joined Bainstone. That's it. Bracknell. I was in Dynamo's when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you would have been in Victor. Yeah. But n- now we are what four years removed from that. Four years uh, removed. This is it. I was my third year, so yeah, it was a year before. Um, yeah. So we're f- four years removed. I personally think the National League's improved a shit ton. How, how how is it when you're rinkside? Do you think that from the uh, year one of the national to now that there's been a lot of improvement? Yeah, I'd say there has. I think the standards definitely different as well. Um, I mean, you can only go on what bench you stand on every week, um, but then you go to watch other games in other leagues, and you're like, actually, the National League is really quite fast and really mm-hmm. quite fancy and quite exciting. Um, and it's good to see lots of new fans getting into it as well. Um, so yeah, and I like the fact that we get to go to Scotland. I can't wait to do that yeah. next month. Have you been yet? No, 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 I managed to swerve the first one. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, that work thing, yeah. uh, no, I genuinely had to work, I think. Um, but and good old Hazel, bless her, the physio up at Solway covered my boys for me. So, um, she's a good egg, she's a good egg, she's a sweetheart. So, um, but I am going on the trip to Solway at the end of Feb. We've got a double header, so I will be going on that. Um, if you haven't been so I get ladies and gents, get up there, go support them. Uh, it's great to have a new team in the national. It's great to have a yeah, team no, from Scotland, yeah, and they are tip top up there. Honestly, you feel so welcome. Everyone's welcome. It's a really good atmosphere. It's a really good vibe around the rink, and you know that's from the owner to the fucking kit boy. Their kit boy, Scooter. Honestly, if you get a chance to have a little chat with Scooter, he's hilarious. Uh, oh, I'll fucking, I, 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 I'll tell the story on here. I think I might have already told it once before. So me and Russell down in Cardiff when Solway playing Swindon and Solway made the big comeback and they scored two goals in the last like 20 seconds to win 4-3. And they got a little tradition up there that Scooter gears down and does a dance. And uh, I'm outside the I'm outside the I'm outside the ring outside the room chatting to JT and Grubby. And they're like, what are you gonna to want to stick around and watch this? And then you just hear it was like the party boys song, and then all you just see is Scooter going rolling by it, making it pass. But with that though, you've got 20 lads that are like, you know what it's like being in the room. No, how I good can't is... avoid that now. I, I run. <laughs> yeah, but how, how good is it though? Like, even your kit guy's a glue guy. Like, everybody's it involved. Fun. It's so, so much fun. Yeah, they're a nice bunch actually. They're all very polite when they come down and they're, they're all really sweet. So, yeah. yeah. It's nice to see. I think everyone moaned about it. And I know when the poll was put out, it was a case of you didn't think about us guys down in Romford. I didn't. <laughs> We were I like, hello, eight hours. <laughs> yeah, I do you know what? I think I looked at Bristol. Because yeah, I'm we, thinking we I'm thinking five, it's five. And I'm like, no, no, we've got the M25 yeah. to get around yet. Yeah, it might be five in a motor if someone's got a lead foot. It might be five in like a DeLorean or something. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think our owner is stretched to a DeLorean though, sadly. <laughs> no. Um what was it like being in, in back in Romford where they've got a new facility. I mean, I remember the old Ron Valley Way. I, I remember Ron Valley Way. I have to say, I used to go there as a rival medic uh, with Dynamos. And um, yeah, that was that was a feisty place to go. But yeah, then equally, Invicta can just be like that as well. And and it used to be it used to be a good atmosphere, I think. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it, was. Like, it was. It was, it was great, good. you know. Um, but yeah, you know what, we've got some really good fans. Um, and uh, it's a nice facility. We're really lucky, actually, at Romford. We've got one of the best facilities, I'd say. So, um, yeah. And for those that have been following along, what we're going to be doing with the charity games next year and involving the kids and getting um, junior tournaments, Romford is one of the rinks that we're the most certainly in discussions about uh, hosting a tournament. As you say, fantastic facility, good people involved. They got Shawnee down there, good guy. Yeah. And you've got you've got some real good, real good people within that organisation. And I think you know, that goes right the way down as as, as from the information that I have, yeah. you know, like, oh, well, obviously you, you're bringing in, you've had TJ coming through, you've got Capsi and, and Tomlin coming through, yeah. like there's kids coming through that system and that can only be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, uh, yeah, the, one of the main reasons, or if not the main reason I got you on, not just to talk junior hockey or senior hockey, is to talk about Adam's Angels. Obviously, we sadly lost Adam Johnson in what was the biggest freak accident I've ever seen in UK hockey history. Um, and obviously, when we have a tragedy like this, good good can come from it. And the the best thing to come from it, in my opinion, was... Adam's Angels. So talk us through getting that off the ground and you know, putting your money where your mouth is, so to speak. Um, okay. So um it wasn't an idea that I just came up with one day and go, oh, we're gonna do this. Um I was actually away in Austria. Matt was training out with NHA. Um and obviously it came through that Adam had sadly passed away and like everybody we sat there like looking at your phone in shock, like Jesus. Um, and my initial thoughts went to like the medics, the sports therapists, the team doctors and everyone that was involved. Oh, just yes. think that would be like my worst nightmare. Um, so obviously from, from our perspective, we all were chatting and everything else up and down the country and, and the empathy was there. So then I'm kind of came up with the idea of like, well, shit, like what happens if teams don't have anyone? Cause there are teams that didn't have anyone. Yeah. Straightforward. Like, so, yeah. I, mean, I yeah. had it over the years. And, so, yeah, or so Your medic might not be able to get there that day or someone. No. I mean, I've always tried to get cover for my guys. Like, if I can't make it, I'll ask the other medic and go, look, if anything happens, worst case scenario, can you check my guys? You know, and, and what's great in, like, the National League and even the teams I work with, all, all of us physios and sports therapists, and, and we all work together, so we'll all help each other in it. We're like one team, in effect, you know? A uh, bit cliche, but we are, and we all pull together in situations. So, and we'll all cover each other's guys because they're people's kids, husbands, wives, whatever, you know what I mean? Loved ones. So I think it's really important. And... And I think that old mantra used to drive me up the wall when obviously a rival player would get hurt and it'd be like, oh, you know, they're not our team, sort of like them. And I'm like, well, no, I'd always go out because you just think, well, that's someone's kid out there. Yeah. And I think... Um, up and down and also country, in hockey, by the way, they might sign for you next year. Well, exactly. And, that's <laughs> it. and it's like, look, at the end of the day, these are, these are human beings. So my initial thought was to try and get um, a therapy directory out, which um, on my old page, I lost all my social media through this. Oh, I saw that, mate. Sorry to see that. I know. That. I lost, uh, it was a bit of a ball ache, but that was a, it was a nice lighting company that took over. So I wish I'd have got some for my house for Christmas, but I didn't. <laughs> they, um, yeah, they could at least yeah. send you a little, send you a little light sample. Outside LEDs. It looked like shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, um, so they, that was my initial view. I thought, right, okay, let me try and get a directory through trying to get some roles filled. So I put a shout out on the socials, went to all like the medic therapy event pages that I knew and I'm a member of. And I had like 50 people come in within like an hour, you know, which was nuts. Um, from that in about, I think, I don't know, within a few hours or 24 hours, we managed to fill a couple of the roles. We had Robin Krebin go into D-side. Love Robin. I used to talk. Um, I managed to facilitate them two to talk and, and that happened. And then, um, one of my clients who's a sports therapist, he's gone in to help run for Bucks. Um, so they've got someone. So there's a few roles that were filled. Um, and then at the same time, I think it might have been Bristol were running a campaign for Bleak Kits. Um, and they were trying to raise money. And I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe if I could get 11 for the National League teams, because we all work together, if something yeah. happens, that'd be really cool, right? Yeah. So um, I set up a Just Give In, because um, that was project number two. So I thought, right, okay, let me just go with it and see where we go with it, you know. Yeah. um put me just giving post out i don't know what day it was it's all a bit of a blur and and i had um my mate Lou Caps, funny Bryn's mum and she messaged and she said like what um what figure are you looking for um because i put a shout out for like sponsors and i have my link and i went well, i don't know so i i gave a figure in my head like random thinking well you know in for a penny in for a pound you know no one's going to do it and within about five hours she actually rung me and I said to her, I said, look, you do realise like, I'm in Austria, right? She went, oh, no, no, I couldn't text you. I've got to ring you. I've got you your money. And I'm like, wait, what? Yep. Um, All right, then, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really was like that. And uh, she went, well, actually, I've got you more than what you wanted because I've included the 32 women's teams as well. So no she, shit. Yeah, so that was big. So that meant we could supply all the women and all of the national teams, like, in one hit. And we were just like, oh, this is massive. So then we start talking to the distributor and they obviously were broke at a deal, which was amazing because the kits we picked were um, they're designed by the Daniel Baird Foundation. So Lynn Baird, who has been an amazing supporter of what we've done. These have been around since like 2017, I think. She sent okay. 12,000 of these out in memory of her son. Um, and we picked them because they're supported by the ambulance service and five pounds from every kit we sent went to her charity. Brilliant. Um, so it was really cool. So um, then we just kept pushing because I thought, well, 
Well, I can't do this. See how many more we can get. And it's just go, like, what's another 100 kits? Because um, it's pretty much what we've done. Um, so then I put some posts in, like, the, the WhatsApp groups in Victor. So, obviously, Rockstone were the biggest one that came in, which was from Luke Hap. So, thanks to them and James Potter, her brother. Um, Legends. Shout like, out, you guys. Oh, they were phenomenal. They really did kick it off. And then... Um, I put some shout outs in like the Invicta WhatsApp groups and then I had Stacey Akers of JH Catering and then Becky Philpot from um, Eltham, Legends of Eltham. Um, check them out. They're like an American food place. The food looks banging. Oh, yeah. Sign me up they for that shit. In, um, they put in a good sum of money. They were like, look, we'd love to help. So now the money's coming in, the just giving's going up and we're like, wow, this is this is really kicking off. And then we had some of my clients donate money. I know Clancy's Goldie Clinic put money in and... We did have an anonymous um, donation come in, which was quite a big donation privately, but they want to remain anonymous. So um, yeah. that person hopefully will be listening. So thank you to them. Um, and yeah, as it turns out, I think, I don't know how much we've raised really, but it's over, it's probably over about the 16 grand mark now. Let's go. Um, we managed then to supply. So we've done all the teams in the elite league. We've done the national league, national league one, North and South, national league two, North and South. We did the SNL, we did the Paras, including both GB, all 32 women. So that's the Elite and then the National 1 and 2. I'm down yeah. the um, we're doing 43 junior clubs, I think maybe 44, up and down the country. That's done. Um, we've got one going down to Danny Myers down at the Ozone. Perfect. The tournaments that they're doing, I wanted them to have one. Um, Hockey Station, they come on board as a sponsor and they were amazing. They used all the money from the profits from their net guards. Um, and they supplied ones for Team GB. Yeah, so, good eggs down there um, as well. Yeah, they did that for us, which was phenomenal. And then we've got Team Scotland, Team England also going to be going out. So if there's any left over, we're going to kind of go through who we could help next. Um, but yeah, that's basically how it happened. You, you could get up. a defib for the 4,000 and county charity games. There's going to be a few old boys wheeling around, oh, out, no. wheeling around out there. <laughs> I see. I can get a medic with a defib. We're fine. I've got that. Kind of we're all good. I've got a paramedic for that, but we're good. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. That's it. And obviously, you guys did that. I believe uh, Rick Strang got like a, a defib a thing going as yeah. well. So all of a sudden, there, there should be no real reason that we don't have a blood kit and a defib on hand at every game. I. I mean, I, my initial. So my ethos really was like I wanted every kit every 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 bench that had a game that day i wanted one of them kits on a bench that's it that's basically what i wanted um i think we've pretty much done it i know clubs have bought their own stuff um but yeah that's also great good yeah, yeah which is brilliant and and a lot yeah. of them come i mean we've had people come in indirect we've had a lot of people say oh can you give us a kit and can you help us and unfortunately what people don't realize is um there is no team behind adam's angels you know but um oki bukla she did my lovely designs there's a couple of other people I need to thank and obviously Lou um she did the design of the logo and set up the social media pages we also sent out some really lovely um postcards um which Oki had designed um Perfect. one of the Leeds Knights fans actually stepped in and uh, Nicola Matthews um oh she's amazing company. yeah she's unreal um, she's an artist for those that don't know go follow her on Instagram she's, she's phenomenal yeah, and okay. she um got us worked out about 400 I think run off um in the end she did us another run um of these for nothing a company called the Hague group uh did them for us as well so in every uh, Adam's Angels kit is one of these flyers so um oh, awesome. so then on game day you've got Adam and his team of angels on your bench so that's basically Fucking... it's alongside you know net guards coming into play and and the blood kits and stuff that that is going to be part of Adam's legacy I mean obviously we wish it wasn't um yeah. but it, it, it is going to be huge. And for those that are not familiar, I mean, I'm pretty ignorant myself uh, on it. What would a blood kit do in a scenario where a player takes the skates? And this is the other thing, by the way. You've been on the bench for donkeys, yeah? How many times do us boys get cut by skates? It's a lot. You get a lot of cuts. I mean, a lot. Adams was a freak accident. And um, and obviously, I don't want to talk too much about obviously no. some butts because it's 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 you can't change what happened, I don't think. No. Um, and and um, but yeah, you do get lots of cuts. Um, so there's quite there's a few key components in these kits. The first one is you've got like a hemostatic gauze. 
So you unravel it. And I mean, they're, they're kind of designed for stab victims, but they work on any traumatic bleed. Yeah. Um, so you would basically unravel it and you would bundle it into the wound and you keep packing it. So um, I think- You try to stop that blood pressure just basically-, basically Well, yeah, and it helps the blood to clot. So it stops the bleed. Like it's almost instantaneous to a point. I mean, wow. my daughter's the best person to speak to is the, um, he, he helped design these kits. So he's better to speak about it than me. So you have that. Then you've got a really large trauma bandage, which you apply to the wound. So, and you apply pressure. If you've got a limb injury, um, you have a tourniquet. So for upper or lower limb, there's a tourniquet in there and there's a pen, so you can write the time that that was applied. There's a foil blanket, there's also a chest seal. Um, yeah. So obviously if there's a, a puncture in the chest, you can put that over there and then foil blanket, CPR guard. Um, but the key component is the hemostatic gauze. That's the life-saving bit that you need. Wow, that's that's amazing. And the fact that, you know, every every club pretty much now, 170, 170 teams by probably the end of next week once the I'm just waiting to collate the money from the just giving there's a few hoops to jump in which I didn't really realize um so uh, yeah. I'm to, and I'm trying to get the money back up to that and I'm like actually I don't want to close it yet I'd like to hit the three and a half grand target so please if you keep going ladies and gents we haven't already that would be yeah. amazing uh if if we could hit that um on top of what we've already raised it means that there's a few other teams that we could potentially supply kits to um that have reached out that and as i said there isn't a team of people sending these kits out and collating all the the info that is just me yeah um and um but and and yeah it's it is what it is but it's it's been a good cause it's a it's, it's absolutely fantastic Cause as a, as an ex player and obviously doing this podcast and stuff now being in amongst it and you know, seeing what happened to Adam, it was beyond my wildest dreams of something like that was ever going to happen on no. the ice. Never. It, and the thing is, us lot, it's not in our wheelhouse. Not once have we ever really think about it. No. And then, and I think, I mean, Christ, I think, yeah, I mean, I've we've had a couple of pucks to the, the face in the last couple of months, you know, and it's yep. you get cut, it's part of the job, you get sticks. Um, and I think a lot of people don't kind of see the, the danger element of it, you know, and I think there's probably... It's probably an element more of concern about that now, and everyone's a little bit more cautious and a bit more aware um, of what can happen. Um, I know, especially in the first week or so on, it, it was a bit, yeah, yeah, I think it was a bit tentative. But you know, it's it's getting back. But yeah, obviously, it doesn't go far from one's mind. Right, and I'm just going to echo what Aaron Fox said. Brilliant interview post game at the weekend. If you are any of these people on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the usual shit. Giving these Panthers players stick, give your fucking heads a shake. They I watch that. Totally they watch that. their mate die on the ice. And it's you, a miracle they're even back on it. Miracle, and you clowns are fucking giving them shit because they lost the ice hockey game. I mean, like, I'm not being funny. They lost their mate, so an ice hockey game is irrelevant. So irrelevant. I don't. I don't even think people can process how PTSD works um, and how trauma works. It doesn't work like that. It's like, oh well, I'm better now. It'll be a it'll be a smell or a sound or a score or a certain time and it it will just go. Um, and I think people should be supporting them. Um, I mean, I made my views quite clear on Twitter actually the other day about this. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I think I told someone to give their head a wobble. Um, yeah. Um, because it's just like really, what are you, it's immaterial. Like it's disrespectful to to not only obviously Adam and and what happened. It's disrespectful to everything about hockey and. It's not what we stand for. That's not that's not oh. the hockey family. Just stop. Just just stop supporting hockey if that's how you're going to be. A hundred percent. And I, I'm sure I'm sure the Panthers organization would rather you didn't put any money in the fucking club and you just oh. stay stayed at home, delete the Twitter, and you know, just you twenty quid. Sure, they'll find someone that would be more supportive. And I know it's a horrible thing to say because obviously without fans' money, you know, teams wouldn't be where they are. But Yes, there goes a losing streak, and yes, there's a losing streak on the behind of watching one of your friends and teammates die. So I genuinely think, yeah, they need to just stop. And it's it's not like we have any experience in this. This isn't like a common occurrence. It's not like oh well, last time this happened, that took the guys six months. Or there is there is nothing. There we is, no. it's so brand new. It's so scary. Yep. They watch their friend and uh, you touched on it there. We spoke about it. I spoke about it. I did a podcast episode um, about Adam and not, let's not forget Matt Petgrave. Obviously he was yeah. involved. Involved. That's got to be horrible for him. Did a podcast at the time and, you know, it's probably the hardest podcast I've ever had to do uh, on the, on the, since I've done this. And we've had so many people reach out. I even still to this day, someone messaged me this week and, um, and said, you know, 
Sure. I just just come across your podcast. I've been suffering for PTSD. I'm gonna go back to the rink after listening to your podcast this week. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. Like if that if if that's what it takes and a little, little bit of help. But there's so many people I talk to medics. Yeah. And obviously you would be better suited. That's what I'm going to get, get onto now. I talk to players, I talk to staff, I talk to fucking arena people, you know, that you forget there's so many people that are involved in an arena on a night, on a, in a big, there's big so many not, people. how yeah. many people saw that? How many people were unfortunate to be there with their kids and their kids seen that? And y- you can't tell someone that when they can be ready. No, and it will it will hit you. I mean, yeah, we've everyone's gone through demons and stuff that's that's caused them to have PTSD type reactions, you know. And this is massive. And I think we just have to be supportive to both teams, both members of staff, fans, players, everybody alike. It's going to hit them at different times, and we just need to be kind. So what we saw on the night was the swift actions of the medics and the medical team and the ERs and everybody. How fucking good were those guys and girls? They were unbelievable. Um, yeah, unbelievable. I just like phenomenal work because I I I read something and it was actually from a surgeon. He said we could have been there with a team of fucking people and we wouldn't have been like that. Like it was that traumatic of an event. It was such a traumatic injury. But they were they were like boom <laughs> over the boards there. Oh, they just did, and that's the thing. And I think. You know, that's what I was touching on earlier. I mean, if you're in this job, whether you're like sports therapy or you're a doctor or you're a medic, I mean, you, you do it because you want to help. You know, that's that's it. And and it it was the fact that then people just were selfless and just did what they needed to do and tried, you know. And that's they the thing, tried, they tried their very best. And that's it. And then you've got these idiot fans, like, behaving the way they're behaving. It's just like, fuck off. Yeah. Just, yeah. Because, <laughs> let, let's face it, most of the medical teams or physios or whoever it is, they ain't, they ain't getting rich out of being there on their Saturday and Sunday. No, we don't. We don't get the loads of money people think we get. Uh, so um, yeah, you do it as a love job. Um, yeah, I definitely. Love I work in my son. My son's in it, and you try and be involved to make it safer for him and his friends. You know, and and that's why in the end I wanted to get the junior kits out and kits to like England, the IHA, they're having delivery of some, and so is Scotland because I just think, well, my son's friends are on them teams. Yeah, and you know I want them to feel safer knowing that when they fly to their tournaments that they've got one in in the medical bag um should the worst happen because yeah we did get cuts there was a i think an incident at mk it might have been last season where it was a wrist and and that was really hard um so yeah it's 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 good to know that something good's come out of it but the medics on the night i i wouldn't have even i would have liked to have thought i'd know what to do no that's i think you lot i'm speaking from experience you just jump over the fucking boards and go for it well, you do just you, you do, know, yeah, you just, try you and just... do something because that's kind of what's in you to to do. I mean, you've seen me the amount of times I've got involved in stuff and yeah, and whatnot, and and that's what you do. And um, and he, and if yeah, I think if any person up and down the country that's it does the job that we do and would have been there, we probably still would have gone around and offered our services. Whether it would have been used is another matter, but we would probably would have offered to try and do something because it's instinct, isn't it? And um. Yeah. But yeah, them them guys were phenomenal, and credit should be given to them because I don't think it was. I don't think they were mentioned and thanked enough, really. I I personally don't think they were enough, no. um, because you know you're a first responder on a scene like that. Yeah, that's staying with you for the rest of your life. Hundred percent. What they did and what they witnessed. Yeah, that's as I said, it would be my worst nightmare. So I genuinely think some some thanks and credit needs to go out to the guys that day and that evening um, on both teams, the fans, anyone that was brave enough to step in and try and help. You know, you are you are unbelievable. Yeah, absolute heroes. And the the Adams Angels, hopefully we never have... Hey, I hope we never have to use a single one of those blood kits. Like, I'd really I really like to think that we don't have to use it. They've all got a five-year shelf life, so let's hope none of them never be used. Um, that would be the dream. Yeah, that would be the dream, right? But if it does and it helps save one life, then it, it won't evoke. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that we've got these things in place now, and, you know, like you say when you're doing these things on your own, it's time consuming. You've got a job, you've got a son, you've got a, yeah. you've got, you've got a hockey team at weekends. You, you, you you yeah, you've got to be at practice at the weekend. So 
yeah, I mean, you got to take some credit yourself. You've been very selfless, and you. you've uh, you've smashed it, mate. I'm really proud of you. You've done a really Thank good job. You. You've yeah. you absolutely killed it. Um, what's uh, what's on the agenda for between now and April then for yourself? Um, well, hockey. Um, what a shocker! Yeah, shocker. Shocker. I mean, like, yeah, we've we've got. Oh, well, I've got a game on a Friday now, which is nice. Next Friday, that's now that. So I've had to shift clients around. Move so some I'm clients, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, here we go. So I'm like, really sorry, you know, I went off and now I am. So, um, yeah, so we've just got hockey and then, um, yeah, what else am I doing? I don't know, trying to, oh, there's a few things with Adam's Angels I want to do that are in the pipeline, but I don't want to jinx that, really. Yeah. But um, I want to try and get a first aid course designed. Um, I've had people from other sports come what, to like me. like a specific ice hockey first aid course? Um potential well i know ali at the iha is doing one for that so is that uh, ali uh, emery yeah she's a sweetheart and uh, uh, ali? behind us and um and supported us um so i know they're designing one that's a little bit more specific for ice hockey so my plan is is if i can raise because i'm not done yet if i can raise enough money i would like to be able to help donate money for every manager and coach on the junior level to go on this course That'd be great. It won't just be like online emergency first aid, stick a plaster on, have a full blanket. Right. Um, it will be a blended learning between online and in-house, so like hands-on. Yeah. Um, and in that hands-on, you will not only cover like CPR and make sure your compression's okay, yeah. you'll cover spinal like protocol. Yeah. Because the amount of times you see hits to the head and it's not done properly. Um, and it's just giving managers and coaches confidence because there's a lot of scared people out there right now um and um and the reason why i did this is because i know someone emailed in and moaned about my kits apparently that they weren't safe uh and they weren't suitable to go out so i thought well what? yeah yeah oh yeah. uh, what is it they say you can you can please some uh, of the people uh, yeah some of the time uh, yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah i was like what well, and I, I was given i was tipped off by a very very good source um and basically someone had emailed in to eih uh with concerns about my kids, basically, that they were dangerous and they shouldn't be being sent out, even though... They've they, even been sent out to 2017 and they've sent thousands out. Public access bleed control kit written on the bag. Yeah, so they're about it's as, as, a, yeah, as official so, as it could be, yeah. No, exactly. And unfortunately, the, the person at EIH who obviously took advice from, they were having a chat, he basically said, look, this is unfounded. You don't have to worry about it. They're, they're, they're brilliant kids. There's, so, yeah, thank you to him. Hopefully he's listening. Yeah, um, so, yeah, so on the basis of that, I kind of thought, well, fuck it. We'll do a first aid course then. And I think then it'll be brilliant, mate, honestly. It. Yeah, so that's basically what we're going to try and do. So um, my aim, and I've had other teams, I've had like football come, we've had rugby, we've had teams across the oh, pond. Amazing. Practice which I've managed to set up um, some supplies out in Canada and America. So they've already got these kits, but they didn't know about them, if that makes sense. until yeah. that time. So um, that's being done. Um, and that's then, fantastic. So yeah, the plan is, is hopefully to help support Ali financially in sending coaches on theirs. And then I want to design one that, and if people want to use mine, EIH will sign it off and say, yeah, we'll accept it. Yeah. Um, because we're going to target other sports as well. Um, Cause I'd love to get these kits out into rugby teams, football teams, you know, because yeah. who knows where this could stop really. It's an area that hasn't been looked at. So, um, and then on top of that, yeah, do a first aid course that covers a little bit, not, not the extraction of all that you see us medics do and all that, but a bit of, protocol of what to do in a head trauma or how to deal with it and wait an ambulance and all that malarkey and just give you a bit of confidence that you know if you have one you know what to do well i mean i know we've spoke personally over the years about head trauma i, I know i've suffered from multiple con concussions and you know that that I, i've had dr victoria silverwood on here absolute gangster she's like a badass like, legend but, you know, you start talking about CTE, you start talking about the things that come on the back of these concussions. And obviously you're there now. The protocol seems to be getting better. Protocol is getting better, um, to be fair. I mean, it's still it's still a grey area, really, at the end of the day. But it's getting better. The awareness is getting better. I think there still needs to be more help in the UK, um, like aftercare, especially if you've got players struggling. Like, yeah. there's nothing. Like there really is. You've got to try and find like a vestibular physio or a neurophysio and um, people that are experts in that. So and also, who's who's going to fund that? Are these players well, that are in the national going to have to pay for it themselves? Well, or? that's the thing. So that's another area of like, okay, well, maybe if Adam's Angels like, well, I don't, who knows we where we go, but if that's an area that we can help support players with that and get into see 
there's a team in London that I found. So I'm going to have a chat with them this week and see what they can do for us. Um, and then see what we can do because who knows where this takes off, but there's lots of areas I'd like to try and help and, and improve. Um, and then, yeah. So the plan is, is to yeah help fund towards Ali's course, design my own. Um, and then maybe look at some sort of CT stuff because yeah, you're really limited in, in aftercare. Yeah. Like yeah. Know, there's nothing. And I mean, it's, there's only so many scat fives you can do and so much rest you can do. If you're struggling yeah. and you're getting issues, then you need proper neurophysio, you need the vestibular stuff, you need the, the cognitive proprioceptive stuff, which I don't do. I'm a sports therapist. I'm not yeah. a specialist phys. So that's what well, I, like to do. I, I know from my, my personal experience that obviously, like I said, multiple concussions, I never got a brain scan. I never got any of that. But it wasn't until I was PT in a client one day and you know, we, we're throwing a medicine ball back and forth during a drill. I say 10. He doesn't hear me, catches the ball. I go to 10 was the rep range. I go to start setting up the next drill. I get hit in the head with back, back of the head with a medicine ball. The next day at the gym, I had a TIA. For those that don't know what TIA is, a mini stroke. Mini stroke. I then had to go through the ECGs. I'm in the MRI. I'm in the, I'm in the head scan. And they go, you've got dark matter on your brain. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, cool. Great. That's fucking good news. But it's not until you then start talking to Dr. Vittorio and you start talking to people that are within the know and you actually start gaining some knowledge. Yeah. That could lead to very bad things for me down the road. And I'm very aware of it. But again, who do who do I reach out to? Who do I But well, that's the thing, isn't it? You start where's your experts? Where'd you go? So that's yeah. maybe that's an area that will a facet, you know, because I think I mean Adam's Angels just came from nowhere, really, um, to be honest with you. I think even the campaign name initially, I, I was at golf with Brian, actually, and, and Karen, and they were like, you need to put your name on it. And I went, but I, I don't, you know, it's not about me, because it weren't. No. Um, um, it was about the sponsors and, and everybody else. And, and they went, yeah, and I went, okay, well, fine. And so I called it Erin's Angels to start with, because it was still really rare with, like, Adam, and I thought, well, I don't want to kind of bring it all up, you know? Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's tough. So, and then I got a bit of kickback off people because apparently it's not about me. Um, so then, yeah, I, I renamed it Adam's Angels. And, um, By the way, I think Adam's Angels just, it's got a beautiful flow to it. it yeah, it, and actually, it, it, really works. Works. it is the, yeah. And, and then once we did the flies, it was a case of, so yeah, obviously Adam and his team of angels will be on your bench on game day. So that's, that's kind of how it stuck from there. And yeah, three months later, here we are. Mate, you guys have done amazing, and I'm really excited about some of the other stuff you're talking about. I know, I know, players that have suffered brutally from concussions. Um, I know a couple in the national league that have already had one or two this year already. Yeah, so uh, and you add it on to the the one they had last season playing for their previous club, and then the uh, season before that, and the season before that. And you start going, mate. You're 24 years old. You've had five concussions in the last fucking three seasons. What yeah. are you what are you doing to protect yourself? Because hey, when you're playing, you're like, give me some smelling salts, let's get back out there. You didn't yeah. it, it was never really anything. It, it was just like, oh my fucking head in my head. But yeah, it's head, not yeah, you can't realize. Yeah. I, I I then see them in and around like the gym and stuff like that. And I'm watching them in the gym and I'm like, You're not okay. Yeah. And, and it's scary. Well. A lot of people don't think that a concussion can come on like days later. Yeah, yeah. Like days later, like literally, and then you can you can have a bit of a mild one, and then you'd be like, "Oh, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'll, I'll play, I'll be okay." And then, bosh, it, it's like a ton of bricks. And then three months later, you're still out, and and it's getting that support for people who are struggling. And I know there's probably I could probably count on both hands how many players up and down the country are struggling right now. But it's like, yeah. where where'd you go? You don't. So yeah, so there's there's kind of that that I'd like to be able to get some help and support. Be like, I don't know, if you've got the injured hobby, jockey fund, maybe the injured yeah, hobby, yeah, like that, and I maybe do something along those lines because I mean, my ethos was to supply um, medical kit and support to ice hockey teams in the UK, and um, and and if that's part of what we do, we offer the support and the kit, then it falls under that umbrella. So who knows where we can go with that? But that's another area that I'd like to try and get a network set up. Um, to be able to help really so that would be really cool you talked briefly about like the directory initially that was the initial thought uh, and you, you're having chats with people how good was the response and are we talking you know it's from you guys up and down the country all over the place yeah yeah pretty much um so the response was nuts actually i mean we had like 50 people going yeah we're working british hockey um because i suppose sadly adam's passing it kind of thrust it into oh. the limelight yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it, it 
it was, um, yeah, it was a massive response, to be honest. But what I was pleasantly surprised is when, when I was going through, obviously, um, sending out bleed kits, one of the questions was like, look, do you have a medic? Um, and I was pleasantly surprised that actually majority of teams do have someone, um, especially like national, national one, mainly are covered national league, elite league, obviously they have to have people. Um, so those teams are covered. Women's tend not to. Um, I think there's a few in NHL two that don't. So that's, we'd like to try and change that. But obviously it comes down to budget. Of course. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, when you're paid to play, it's like, can you afford to pay for someone like me to stand on a bench? And a lot of people can't. But ideally, it would be nice that we could get get that supported and changed. So that will be something towards the end of the season I'm going to start looking in for next season. And also, if you're in your industry and you, you, know, you like the idea of working with a sport team and it's something perhaps you've not done before, why not go cut your teeth down at NIHL too? Give some time, yeah, get, get do down there, good. get some experience, and then who knows? Maybe, yes. maybe is, a team's a team. I mean, as blue, brutal as it is, it doesn't matter whether you're in the elite league or whether you're in NHL two. A hockey team's a hockey team. You yeah. still got twenty two guys to look after, and you're still probably going to be ripped the piss out of most days. You're working most days. <laughs> yeah, most you days. Yeah. So standard. Uh, secret Santa is always a joy. Um, yeah, you got some good ones this year. I saw. Well, no, that. I did alright actually. I, I, my, whoever was mine actually was really funny. Um, I got a box of COVID tests. Obviously, which, <laughs> obviously <laughs> beautiful. Um, but they did get me a really lovely set of angel wings, which are in pride of place in my clinic shelf. So I thought that was quite cute. Yeah, I thought the boys did good food. Uh, when you posted that, I saw the COVID. T- COVID t- test. I, was, I literally pissed myself. I, I was fucking laughing. I was I roaring cried. up. Yeah. So yeah, they know me well. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I think they know you. And but you know that's that's great banter and it's it's good things. And and they're the things that you remember when you do a podcast like this and someone says oh, I mean, some of the stuff. What's it like? That, that's yeah, what, yeah. that's oh, where you go. Funny to. and. Yeah, it's, it's a great sport. I mean, any sport's funny to work in. To be fair, but I've, I've dabbled in football. I've done super sport at, at um, like BSB and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's fun. But ice hockey is just this unique. It's just a bit fucking nuts, isn't it? You need a bunch of de- yeah. degenerates. Yeah. You're quite ADHD as an individual. It's the perfect sport. It's high adrenaline. You've got crushing highs, crushing lows, which is really great for someone with like anxiety and mental health issues. Yeah, great. Get, you know, get mixed, that, mixed, you're mixed you're right chronic, in. You're chronically <laughs> depressed for a month. Yeah. Um, and uh, But yeah, it's, it's great. And you get a good bunch of guys to work with. It makes it even better, actually, to be fair. And there's some funny, there's some funny tricks that we've had. Over the years, I think, um, yeah, WH Smith dinner last season was was one of the highlights. I think WH oh, yeah, Smith. What so do you? Yeah, we got in at four thirty in the morning, me and Aaron, and we were furious because we'd come back from Telford and all the roads were shut. And it was oh the, yeah, yeah, the day the clock went forward as well. Yeah. Um, and we're all sitting on the bus, and we're like, "That's going to change in a minute." And then, yeah, we got into Romford at like half half three, and then really? got in half four. It was great. So Don't get up. Strong dinner choice. It was a strong boat and a packet of pickled onion monster munch and a Ginsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, technically, it's probably breakfast of champions at that point in the morning. Oh, it was, to be fair. We were just <laughs> like, all I can remember is like the alcohol aisle just. Yeah, yoink. Oh. It was like, we've got another four hours of this. Like, let's just go. And, and the bus trips are probably. They're probably the thing I actually... I used to... The, the thought of getting on the bus and going to Manchester was always like, oh, and then you get on the bus, the bus boys, you, you start playing snaps and no, you start... Uh, yeah, you, yeah, I, you I start sit in the back fun. of the bus, I'm not the front of the bus. I sit in the middle. I'm like the gatekeeper between the fans and the players. Oh, yeah, because that's that's something that they started bringing in like towards the end of my career. You'd be on the... Oh, I don't know. I haven't told this story on the pod. Maybe I'll tell it on the... Yeah, fuck it. I'll tell it. We have to um, be really careful because you can't really do... like I remember like my brother, when he used to do dynamos... There was him and Moffat, and they used to oh, get, they get away with this shit now. Yeah. And I was used to be traumatized because they used to do naked time with Dan and Moffs, and they used to interview <laughs> Bussy, the fucking bus driver, start like, naked going up, up the M4. <laughs> you'd pick that, you'd drive along the other side. Be like... And then you'd like shimmy up the, the bit where the part the things go, your bags above the seats. Yeah, they'd shimmy up like, like Spider Dan, he used to do it, and he'd sing, and he was naked. It was fucking horrific. Yeah, Ch- 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 Chad Riki was always good for uh, for naked bussing. That was funny. And, and like the days before, the days before fans came on the bus, it, like it used to be wild. We used to have great fun. And I, I remember once we, were, I think we might have been on the way back from one of the northern teams. We've got Chinny there. Chinny's three bottles of red wine deep, and he and he goes like this. 
to 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 get some air in the roof, and it goes, and the fucking the, the, the air light just went boom, 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 right down the motorway. And like, so you're sat on the bus on the way back, and it's absolutely freezing. And you know, we had like lo loads of trips like that. I remember once playing in Swindon, away in Manchester. And we stopped in the roughest place in Manchester, I remember. Ooh. And it was like kebab house, burger, Indian, whatever. So obviously tw <laughs> 20 lads get off the bus and everyone kind of splits up and goes uh, separate ways. I'm in, and in fact, I'm in the, uh, I'm in a pizza shop there and it's just me and the two physio girls and a group of five lads come in and start being inappropriate. And this was the days that fans had come on the bus. And it only just started, it only, they'd only just started coming on the bus. So most of the fans stay on the bus, right? And all the boys get off and get their food. That's it. And the fan the fans are sitting parked outside. And with that, Morsey's walked past the window and I've gone, like, do you know a look? Yeah, like, I, I, I've looked like, uh oh, here we go. And these lads are drunk, they're probably wired, and they're being inappropriate. Next thing they we go out and, and they're mouthing off. And Pete Russell's a coach with Ryan with with Aldi. and Seski's no Seski's like what, about to be one of the last guys to get on the bus. I'm stood next to Seski to make sure he gets on the bus. With that, one of the, one of the guys grabs Seski and pulls him off the bus. Bad move. Really bad move. <laughs> really bad move. So now now me and Seski are fighting these two guys. Obviously, all the boys have now just peeled off the bus. You've got guys going underneath trying to get the stick bag out. Just trying to get the try try to open the stick bag out of the boot. So it goes goes without saying that these lads got levered, and they got they got they got really levered. But it wasn't until you get back on the bus that you go, "Fuck, the fans are on the bus. We're all coming in. We're all like got ripped t-shirts, blood everywhere. And get, all the fans are sitting on the bus like, uh, what just happened? Is it?" And and what what had happened as we were driving off? They had um, I don't know what they had did, what they did it with, but they smashed Bussy's headlights. So we then we get out of there. We we were like, right, we got to leave. We leave. We get out and we we stop on the motorway about about half hour out of town, and Bussy's calling in. Yeah, the car's been in the the, the bus has been in the car park. Somebody <laughs> smashed up the front of the bus. We're like, yes, Bussy, go on, lad. Like, Bussy, and they're all called Bussy. Actually, all called Bussy. They're all called Bussy. It's like just their name. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter right. where you are. But honestly, ice hockey gives you some fun trips. It gives you some dynamite stories. and It, it does, uh, I have to say. Many a trip to the Isle of Wight, actually, when we smuggled an import in the blue. <laughs> his passport. Yeah, all, all of those ones. We used to do that going up to Scotland, I remember, early days of when like imports. Up. Imports coming over to play Fife and Dundee and all them See, teams. You've got hiding the news over the over the border. You ain't got your passport. Yeah, you ain't got your passport, lads. That's it. <laughs> you got eight Canadians squeezed in <laughs> squeezed in a toilet. And I think you know, I was with Alex Shaw once, and um, and I remember when he left or something, they presented him like with a passport thing, and it had like um, obviously United Kingdom and it had and the Isle of Wight, and it's only <laughs> that it was a wind up because he literally hid in there all the way there and back. Oh, really that's cool. so much fun, right, very... Aaron. Thank you. I can't appreciate your time enough, mate. You're, oh, you're a super, you for superstar for what you've done there. Keep it going. Keep expanding it. Keep bringing new ideas to the table. If Thank we can you. help, if we can help in any way whatsoever, please do not hesitate. I'll to... give you a shout. And likewise, obviously, if you need any help with your stuff, then just shout. You know, right? Yeah, we, you know, you're you're always coming to our charity games for sure, ladies and gents. If you haven't already, please do go check out the Just Giving page, even if it's a fiver, a tenner, whatever it may be. Something something is better than nothing and all of it is going back into our sport it's all staying within our country and we are we are doing our best as small kind of individual people to try and do the best for the uk sport and what aaron's done is fucking wicked and if you guys could help that that'd be great and you can help us by like subscribe comment on this and do all the usual good stuff and we will see you for another episode very very soon peace thank you bye